first of all, thank you everyone That's for right. yesterday talks. This was amazing. And uh, I wasn't sure for the last moment until the last moment what will I be focusing on when I will uh, spend these 30 minutes with you. But at the last moment, I decided that the topic will be advanced. <laughs> thank you all for making this decision. And before we illustrate the dive in, uh, let me introduce myself a little bit. So, my name is Nikita. I was uh, working in MariaDB for the last uh, five years. And uh, I've been de developing a little bit of system version to together with uh, Alexei Mininkov and application time periods. And also, so if you have any questions about uh, these fields, including virtual accounts, which are also under my maintenance now, uh, please write me. Uh, here's a QR code with the link and uh, the references. And also uh, quite a descriptive article about online author table itself, because the feature is big and uh, there is a lot of uh, a big list of limitations and uh, what kinds of things are supported in comparison with uh, what we had before. So I just will not fit in uh, to my timeline uh, while talking about all this. So better to read. And now about online altar table. So it's basically the uh, the usual altar table, which is a uh, algorithm copy. How the algorithm copy works by making a copy of a table and then uh, <coughs> A copy of a table with a new schema. Yes, but the difference now goes that we have one extra step, step two, where, where we uh, accumulate the changes in the online change buffer and then apply them on, on the newly copied table. Well, it's still not visible to you when you are running the server. And then on the step three, the commit basically is when the table comes finally visible. The step three actually is the place which <coughs> makes us uh, to make some synchronization. This synchronization point means that uh, okay, we are allowing to uh, run the DMLs while uh, you are making this helper table, but all the DMLs have to be finished before the end of this uh, statement. Now this works like this. And also, all the DMLs that uh, have begun before, the alter table also have to finish before this alter table begins. Why? Well, we have just, first we have set, set, make some setup, we make some setup. Uh, we set up like the internal trigger, and uh, from that point of time, uh, all the transactions can use this trigger. Internally, they just know that this table is going to be altered, and so uh, this makes it be possible to be unblocked like that. So for the most time, for the copy stage. For the most of the replication stage, you can run the parallel DMLs. However, there is a small part in the end. Well, you know, we are replicating, replicating uh, the data that is coming from the parallel DMLs. Then we just have to stop at some point, right? And to, to make this step, well, we have to raise the clock severity, where still the select can be possible, but uh, no more raise, and apply the rest. So it is, it, it is uh, expected to be a small step in the medium of the time. I also know that, well, this, uh, this timeline is not linear. It's like, uh, this is a few milliseconds. 
This template is also a few milliseconds. This is expected to be a little bit more. But also, depends on the workflow, should be too much. So let me go by some example. Okay, it's just you no know, screen mirroring is broken somehow, so I will have to. So we see what we have before. So let me create a new zero. Yes, make some fields, uh, make some rows. And let's uh, test up what it means that selects are allowed during all the output table. And what it means for you. So I would, um, for example, stop the transaction. Or how, for example, I just know what happens. So let's start. And I think let's go like, like this. So you actually don't have to write anything to enable uh, online. It just uh, chooses alter table segment chooses it automatically when it's possible. But I want to make sure that it is online, so I add algorithm equals copy and block equals known. So if if the statement, for example, would be impossible to make online, this will just return an error. And if I wouldn't add it, it would just uh, choose the worst algorithm. And it has. Why? The reason is the outer table is basically made to the almost to the end. But then it had to write the lock to make the synchronization. It's a synchronization point in the very end. How we can check it? So, we can see that the state is uh, waiting for a table meta metadata log. And the stage is 4. It's 4 out of 4. And progress is 100%. The outer table is almost done. But it has to synchronize. So it waits when this select will be finished. That, well, okay, this select was basically finished, right? Uh, not this one. But it's still a transaction, so the table is still open. It should be closed somehow. For example, I can make a commit row. Yes, and I'm going to the pages. The same actually applies when I start the transaction with the end update.
let's see the process first. So the stage is now zero out of zero. Again, before the alter table can go on, all the writes should be finished. So why this is why it ends right here when we have a transaction that writes to this table. Uh, what version is now this new process list column was introduced? You know, because it's quite new. <laughs> Which column? Uh, everything behind time milliseconds, stage, etc. This is eleven two. No, program report was there for quite a while. Yeah, after after process. The main use. Oh, so stage. The program report. It was quite a while ago. Uh, well, program support is available. <coughs> uh, <laughs> that was about five years ago. Yeah. I, I'm not tired of waiting for all the tables and it's progress about you to do The stage and next stage is uh, the, uh, related to progress support. All right, so I will just. The max memory is, uh, is very useful to find issues when. Well. So now we have three different sources for the same information show process list, information schema, and the function of threads. And they are diverged. It should be the same number. But I don't, actually, I don't think that the problem is going to tax maximum mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. I have a question. Really pretty interface, so I can't see it. Yes, okay. Now. I think with the sure process, that it's my So you can see it live. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, uh, it's a live number, not something that you. The performance can you get it at the end of it. And I wonder what if we will start the transaction, make some reads, and then, for example, update. So I have to change the column again. Okay, this is the third column we have to this table. And let's begin the transaction again. So proceed. Now, we start from the select, right? So it's a transaction that reads from the table. And now the table hangs open. Let us ah yeah. I, I guess I already started the started the outer. Yes, I should come um, vice versa. No matter. And now in the same transaction, we will update what happens. Do you guys understand? So we had outer table that went almost to its end, like to here, and it was hanging waiting when this select transaction would finish. And then with the same transaction, we would make update. So this is a deadlock. I I would presume that it's kind of a little bit creepy that not outer table fails, but the XML. Well, it can be tuned up, I think. And uh, if uh, you think it's the thing that uh, affects your workflow, please write and we can communicate and decide what we can do with it. Isn't it possible that you only give the address if there's uh... And basically, you can end out that table. There's no transaction who is using it. And if send that there's somebody using it, you just say that wrong re uh, read you got. Is that basically what it, it, it means? If nobody's using it, it's, it, it, then it's a, you can still finish out that table. You still do, you will still still get the same error if you do insert without the table with block other things. 
Well, if the transaction doesn't use uh, this table, you mean? Yeah. Then, then, then. If it doesn't use this table, then no problem. It does, the alpha table just will work. It shouldn't wait for an empty transaction. Well, uh, normally, yeah. the, the log detector decides what transaction to kill. It should prefer to kill the transaction that it has done uh, less work. Of course, it makes a lot of sense to kill one update. Then to kill the whole open table that may be running for hours. You don't want to kill that. Yeah, but this one. Go ahead, you don't want to select between two and one. Right, so it's a deadlock and what you saw. And it's a small transaction, not the huge open table. So that's, that's right. You don't want to kill the whole table. The deadlock killer chooses the one, right? But when you take the detect chooses to kill the update because it's one small transaction. Then to kill the, it prefers to keep the huge folder table that might have run for hours. You don't want to kill all the table. You want to kill something small that is easy to be done. Mm, I would disagree. In, in some sense, well, outer table is something that is uh, supposed to be restarted if uh, things go bad. Just the migration script should be ready in the outer table. Well, if you do all the repairs, you start Okay, I agree with that. Uh, if somebody writes a transaction that has a back from the table, then it has an update from the table, they should be ready, then they can have a bad log. With another with a similar transaction, for example. That's right. Also. <coughs> so now, any questions so far? When? When what? Transaction ready. It is. Ready? Yes, it is available in eleven point two. It's open use. Just use it. Ah, well, maybe you just use it already. No. no. If you want to wait for the <laughs> you can uh, any uh, okay, yeah. What is your version? Uh, 10, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, well, yes, to, to make uh, this alter table hang, I had to keep the read view open. And if it's open, also, well, alter table can progress until the very end. But then, when the table should have, uh, have to be switched from the old one to the new one, well, you have you just have to make everyone who uses the old table get finished. Is it possible to either run the table so it will simply wait until we clean the window here and then we'll do it in this clean window? Or schedule that? I mean, I can schedule for the events, but uh, I need a clean window where it's here. So it's here. So it's that's a great question, and I'm happy to hear it. No, it's impossible right now uh, with the what's uh, with what's implemented. But yeah, I heard that uh, some other competitors have it in some online schema changes, so it can be considered, right? Yes. Uh, well. Uh... I think it's like a, a question. I think it's interesting if you look at my perspective. And it's obviously like a number of online schema change tools like uh, right. uh, Ghost, right? And what, uh, do you know what was the name of the new Spotify tool? Uh, I think it's Spirit. Spirit. Spirit, yeah. So and I think the question that they say, well, well, let's say we have a 10 terabyte scale, right? We run IT table on a 10 terabyte scale. Uh, it can take us, you know, like a long time. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of days, right? So, did you like look into like the, if there's any like overhead impact to the server, right? Of uh, such long <coughs> to days, right? I think so. That's a question number one. And the second question, I think, what is interesting is what you look here is what a lot of us tools start to do right now is also um, 
uh, some sort of like a parallel channel, mm -hmm. right? That Emmanuel do saying, hey, you know, instead of trying to do anti table in a single thread, right? Well, it's limited, and there's probably like a tens, if not hundreds, CPU cores available, right? You want to use all of them to convert to right, have a live state. So, what's the question? The question is: uh, Is it a parallel or a single thread? Okay, so the first question: the uh, what what can happen if you're making a copy of the table online on the tenant device? No, no much difference with the usual copy alter table. <coughs> Mostly, the overhead depends on the uh, the throughput of parallel DMLs. The more writes you have parallel in the table, first, the longer you will have this alter table running, and second, this uh, online online change buffer will grow, probably, and especially while the pop stage runs, right? Then it will try to consume uh, the parallel player, uh, well, not parallel, <laughs> the basic potential player. will try to con consume, uh, but while the copy goes, it can grow, and by default, we have a memory buffer of eight kilobytes, and then if we go upper beyond this uh, eight kilobytes, it goes to the file. The file is uh, located in the TMP zero. TMP zero is computer. Okay, but, uh, but uh, what about uh, this um, uh, snapshot? Right? Do you like copy the data chunk? In this case, do you, do you have to keep like an open view at any point? So, uh, first, let me ask the second question. It's sequential player. Oh. Yes. So it's single threaded. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I have a picture somewhere. Yes, this is this was going to be the next slide. Uh, so this is the hemi stage and how it works now. We have uh, this global online replication buffer from which the alter table player picks uh, the um, row changes one by one and. Uh, the TMLs have the, their own uh, per, per connection small local buffers, which are at the chemist stage, are written uh, atomically. This is also a problem at, and a potential bottleneck, which you can find, maybe, or maybe not. Depends on your workflow. Well, I would expect that if you have a lot of small transactions, like maybe really low transactions, but small. It will not affect you. This uh, window, well, I think it, it should be cached quite good. When we have an overhead over this eight kilobytes, you have another memory buffer again, and it goes into the, the memory first. So. The lock doesn't hold for the long time there. And if the, there are not so many transactions, but they are big, also only the commit stage is affected. So it's uh, not likely that you will have uh, a collision in that case. But if you have a lot of transactions that are also very big, and they all rush into the commit stage, this can be a bummer right now. But, uh, the read re view, because this is just using in the, the read view, so basically you have a read view during all of it. Do you have a... No, if you have a read view, then nothing is written, so... The a read view <coughs> is that you can access all the rows that are not changed inside the alta table. That's the read view. If you have a lot of uh, the table, you might want to have more than two stages of applying the right lock. To keep, to keep the table uh, right lock for as short as possible. 
Yes, this is also correct and uh, another thing we consider. We would want uh, to maybe add more stages here where, where still prison rights will, will be both possible. And then at the very last moment. And, or maybe even go beyond there and uh, don't wait. Yes, this is the optimization number two we have. I wonder if we will unlock the secrets file or not. <laughs> Here, well, why why would we have to wait anyway uh, at all? For example, we could, from the TML side, just uh, take the take uh, take the new table and uh, check if we have, for example, an update operation, right? We can check the new table if the row is already copied. We could just uh, go straight there and update, make an update from the GML uh, connection maybe. But then this will a little bit slow down uh, your uh, GML, which I, I find kind of unlikely. So maybe anyway, it could be better um, to go first to the online buffer and then like apply it in parallel, for example. If, if the row is not still available, and uh, you could mark it for uh, just skipping so it wouldn't be copied and still make an insert in the new table in parallel with the online output table. It is considerable. It's a little bit uh, complicated to implement. We have to store these uh, uh, skip marks somewhere, maybe make some buffer or whatever, but as long as the the, the size of this buffer will grow, it will have to be somehow managed as well. So there are things to consider, and if you think it's worth for you, uh, that we don't have to wait at all, so your demos just continue running, even without bothering whether the result table or not. Write us, write me or want to, so we can talk about it. Please. Well, right. Uh, it's uh, it's an implementation detail, but right, I, uh, right now reuse some replication libraries, and also I use the same format as replication uses. It reminds what we have in the relay log. On this slide. Yes, parallel line can be uh, added. Well, it's with a few effort. I don't think that, that uh, what changes depends on what changes, but the case yeah. loading does all that, so basically they use existing. At first, I don't think that parallel application is a problem to implement even from scratch. Second, uh, I don't guarantee that we will always have the same format and will uh, reuse the replication. We could convert this online buffer into another table, for example. This is implementation detail. You will consider it uh, well, workable. Workable. Oh, sorry, can you get a little bit louder, please? Uh, if you just take the online buffer, write some more events uh, and separate a binary uh, stream, and then apply that with the replication as if it was a master, uh, only serving those binaries and serving the actual table. Then you, you can have asynchronous uh, applies <coughs> and parallel applies at the same time. And, and the, the online broker doesn't go, it's just a broker for the thing. You see your question how uh, online output table works uh, while the parallel re replication is enabled? Mm. No, I, I think it would have been logical to just build all what we have in the replication to be applied. 
Uh, even of the but that doesn't work. Ah. But that doesn't work because the, the, there is nothing in the body of the that are outside the so There is nothing in the refrigerator. No, no, but you create the cigar stream of the I I see your point. At first, we will have if you have a lot of other tables, we will have to search through this uh, binary log to find uh, the rules to apply for the online on the online replication, replication stage. So I decided to go another way. First, this is the separate buffer, so you don't have to search. It is easier to implement and it is just faster. And you don't have to have been log enabled. It will serve also the users without being log enabled, without replication. What happens on commit, because you, have, you, you can't have the things in, in the online buffer on commit. For this search to copy. On on commit, we on commit <laughs> we write the log uh, before. You mean the commit for the lineup? Commit for for a change uh, in that uh, table that is out there on the GML set. Yeah. On the DML side, we have a local buffer that uh, is atomically written to the global online log. But the problem is has, has to be the table because somebody else doesn't select that row, they need to see the new row. If it's on the online buffer, they will not see it. So, uh, somebody, uh, one trade, the first one doesn't insert. You have to. Uh, and the other one doesn't, doesn't, doesn't select. It needs to see the new row. Now it doesn't have to see it the has to, because otherwise it will not like the other table would not uh, be running. It has to be, from the user point of view, it has to be, you shouldn't be, nothing should change when other table is running, except that you can get uh, your, your transaction rolls back. But if I insert in a one uh, transaction, one row, the next transaction has to see. Right, the next transaction has and to there, there, there are two transactions. So the first one insert row number one, and the other, second has to select. You can't uh, just have it in the online buffer, you have to have it in the table. They have to run in the recommitted re isolation level. I mean, uh, they but that don't have to run on it, but you have to support on the engine the recommitted. But uh, if the user hasn't said that they committed and nobody sets that, that will not work. You can't assume No, it works. Works. It's just symbols. But we don't have read committed by default. There is no difference with uh, how, for example, the replication the, the replication works or the binary logs committing work. It, it's really similar and uh, many people notice the similarity. But we don't, we don't, we run a repeatable read by default, not read committed. You can't change it to, to that. <coughs> oh, sorry, repeatable read. Repeatable yeah, read. But that repeatable also read. means that if, if something is inserted in the upper level, the next one should see it. So, how do they see it if it's not only in the uh, change buffer? Why only in the change buffer? It's also in the table. Yeah, that's what they ask. So, you are actually added there. Okay. No, okay. Right, it does a normal table, right? And additionally, it uh, goes to this small local log, transaction log. Say so. so, I think we should uh, finish. Thank you very much. It was very interesting.